Hi, I am Dr. Graham. Alright, so here we are starting my day. We're looking at labs and making sure that everything is doing well. Surgery days usually start at 7 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. because you know with ENT we have quite a bit of young kids and they do not understand why they can't eat so we like to get them in and out early so they do have to be without food so we try to get them very early so they will get to the surgery center or the hospital about an hour before then I show up and when I show up is when the fun begins and then in the afternoon on my surgery days then I come to clinic. If I do not have surgeries, however, then I usually start a clinic at around 8.40 or 8.50 a.m. And it is just blazing from the day you walk in and the minute you walk in to the time you leave. So basically, I work Monday through Friday afternoon because I like my Friday afternoons off. Because we're ENT practice, the good thing is that we see everybody from young baby who was just born and um, we're literally talking three days old all the way up to grandma and grandpa who can't hear. So we have the best specialty in the world, I must say. We can see young boys and girls, we see adults and we see everybody because everybody has an ear, nose and throat. Hi, how are you? I'm Dr. Graham, nice to meet you. And so with clinic, you know, we have patients that we've been seeing and I've been seeing for decades and never needed surgery. And then you have those that come in and they're like, oh, need my tonsils out, you know. So you have a variety of people. We see everything from allergies, chronic tonsillitis, chronic sinusitis, thyroid issues, you know, vertigo and things of that nature. While it is a small area of your body, it's quite a varied field. So it's great, I love it. Truth be told, I thought I was gonna be a pediatrician because I love being around kids. And then I did a pediatric volunteering job because my mom is a nurse and so she got me a volunteering job at the hospital and it broke my heart to actually see sick kids. And so I said, no, I couldn't do pediatrics, but I knew I wanted to do something involving pediatrics. So kind of investigated and I thought, you know, where can I go where I can do peds, but you know, I didn't want to just do medicine all the time. And ENT was the answer because you can do medicine and surgery. You don't have to pick, you can do both. And it's pretty much one of the few specialties, if not the only one, where we do not have a medical counterpart. So for example, general surgery, the medical counterpart would be gastroenterology. Urology, the medical counterpart would be um, nephrology. With ENT, we manage both the medical and the surgical aspects of care. So for me, it was just much more comprehensive. And like I said, I get to see the kiddos, I get to see everybody else, and so it's great. I actually wanted to be a doctor since I was seven. And um, it was actually quite a sad story, but inspiring. You know, one of my mom's good friends when I was in Jamaica, where I was born, had breast cancer. And back then, you know, there weren't a lot of treatments, especially in like a third world island. And so I remember she was a mom of four. And all I can remember is, I'm sorry if I choke up a little bit, but all I can remember is that I knew she was not gonna make it, but all I can think of was her babies are left. Sorry. And then I just decided that I just didn't want anyone living without a mommy. And so that was my goal at seven. So no one would live without their mommies. And so that's how, yeah, true story, that's how I want to be a doctor. And yeah, because even coming up to America, we brought up one of her daughters with us. And um, I just remember looking at her after her mom had passed. And I remember saying to my mom, she doesn't have a mommy anymore. And it was just heartbreaking for me. So for me, I want to quote unquote, fix people so they have their moms. And so that was really what got me interested in medicine. And so I was pre-med in high school in Queens, New York at Hillcrest. And then I was just pre-med bound. 
but I always knew that I didn't want to waste time. So I said, you know, I wanted to know and make sure that medicine was right for me. And so I wanted a more diverse major. So I actually was pre-med with a chemistry minor, but I was an economics major. So yeah, so I figured, you know, if I didn't go the medicine route, you know, if I chose, if I changed my mind, I would still have my pre-med requisites, but it'll also be more balanced, whether it's business school or law school. So it really doesn't matter what the major is as long as you have your pre-med requisites. And so after college, um, you know, you apply to medical school. And I went to Harvard and um, in Boston. And of course, while I was there, I figured at first, just in case they made a mistake and let me in, let me get all my degrees while I'm there. <laughs> and so I did get my MD, but I also got my master's in public health with a concentration in healthcare management. And so, you know, unbeknownst to me, it's actually worked out because you learn the clinical side of medicine, but also the public health and the management side of medicine. Yeah, and while in medical school, that's when I figured out the specialty, and that's when you apply for the otolaryngology. Back then, again, literally another century, <laughs> it was an early match. And so because it was a difficult specialty to get into, you know, they gave us the opportunity in case we did not match in otolaryngology, we would still have time to go to like internal medicine or one of the regular match programs. So that's how I'm here. Hi, hey. I'm Dr. Graham. How you doing? I am not feeling well today. Oh, I'm so I would here. say the first thing is to be honest with yourself. You know, you have to separate what is the, you know, the rush of medicine versus reality. Meaning that if you're the kind of person, if you just want to go, 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 and each person is different and you never see these people again, you know what? ER medicine is for you. If you're more like, say, me, I like, you know, more routine yet intriguing, you know, then you look at specialties such as otolaryngology because you have to remember as fun as the rotations are, that is literally a month or two of your life, but your career, it could be easily 30 years. So you, can, you don't wanna go for the high stress, high trauma, high drama, if you don't think you can hang in it for 30 years because you'll burn out fast. And I think that's one of the things that I looked at when I did all my rotations, to be frank with you, the otolaryngologists were the coolest and we are the best specialty, we're cool. <laughs> so they were fun, they were laid back, they had balance. And that's always been so important for me personally. So I say you have to look at how you foresee your life and if it's balance you want, then becoming a trauma surgeon at a level one hospital may not be for you. So in my humble opinion, I think we are the best otolaryngology practice. We are allergy, ear, nose, and throat of Northeast Texas. And we have three convenient locations, one near you. <laughs> so we have the Rockwall location, we have a Greenville location, and um, a McKinney location. We have four partners, three gentlemen, and the best me, <laughs> no, but one lady. And so, you know, we have a wide variety. We have people who want to see a female doctor that narrows it down to me. Some people just want a certain day of the week. So fortunately between the four partners and um, the three locations, we're always able to accommodate. <laughs>